Joining me right now, exiled Venezuelan mayor, someone who knows that brutal dictatorship all too well, David Smolansky, as well as former Bush 43 senior advisor Brad Blakeman. Good to have you both here. I'm yeah. starting first, Brad, with you. What was your reaction to that display, that drama, uh, those accusations from Ms. Omar today? Despicable. And if there's any reason why she should not be on the Foreign Relations Committee, that was it. She had a rich target in front of her, a Jewish diplomat, a well-known American Jewish Republican diplomat, whose history with the support of Israel, as well as uh, causes under Republican presidents, is well known. And she couldn't pass up the opportunity. Her anti-Semitic behavior was in full force and effect today. Her audience uh, was one that wasn't in the Congress. She knows who she's playing to, and she played right to them. So does she need to resign from the Foreign Affairs Committee, as the president has suggested? Does she Nancy Pelosi resign. need to kick her out? Kick her off mm -hmm. today. Let me go to David for a moment, because, you know, David, um, you got people in your country that, and we're going to show some pictures. We're taking viewers inside a Venezuelan hospital uh, a little later in the show. They're hard to see, but it, you've got people who are starving to death, people who can't access basic medicines. Uh, you know, I, I hate to point out the obvious, but 20 years of socialism combined with uh, that kind of government and Nicolas Maduro and his cronies, that's what it does to a country. But when you see Representative Omar up there today going after the guy who's trying to help find your country a lifeline and, and a way out of this mess, and she starts using that platform for a political attack, what does that make you think just about everyone back home? Um, it is important to say what's going on now in, in, in Venezuela. Uh, Venezuela is suffering from the worst humanitarian crisis that any country of uh, Latin America has ever had. Uh, we're having a hyperinflation um, that is estimated 10 million percent according to the IMF this year. Crime during, during these 20 years uh, have killed almost 30, 330,000 people and more than 3.3 uh, million Venezuelans have fled uh, against uh, its will. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the best solution for for our country is to restore democracy, is to recover freedom, and is to is and, and is to get rid of, of Nicolas Maduro. And that's the effort that we've been doing during the last five weeks. That is why almost 60 countries have already recognized Guaido as the interim president of Venezuela, and we're very close to restore democracy. And 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 and, and here in the states, sorry to take a bit long, Trish. Um, I mean, bipartisan has been. I mean, the Democrats. I mean, a lot of the senators of Democrats are, are, uh, agree on the on the on the situation in, mm -hmm. in, in in Venezuela. So I mean, it's important to keep it uh, like that because this is beyond ideology. We are we are facing in Venezuela a criminal state. Yeah. You know, look, Brad. I, this is one where it's not that hard, right? I mean, there's right and wrong in this world, and. When you see all the wrong that has happened there and you see the devastating effects that it has had on the people and when you see that uh, this is a country that's pretty darn close to our shore and the last thing we want is the likes of the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, Hezbollah uh, and the Cubans there controlling everything. The Cubans, I should point out, are controlling everything pretty much right there now. I, you know, it, it seems to me that it's not that hard to make the leap that, you know, there's a side to be on. And it's not the Russians, but Absolutely. for you know. And, and as David points out, there's been a ton of Democratic support for this as well, including Nancy Pelosi, who has come out saying, "Yes, you know, we need to support Juan Guaido and this opposition um, movement." But yet, <laughs> Representative Omar wants to take us back to um, Nicaragua and Guatemala and, and you know, attacks on Mr. Abrams. She hijacked the hearing. Uh, she, she took away uh, what should have been a, a bipartisan focus on the horrors and atrocities you just heard from, from people who know it best. They lived through it. We should be rallying together as Americans. I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, whatever you call yourself, you should be for helping people in need. This shouldn't have been a contentious hearing at all. We should have been figuring out ways to do, to do everything, move heaven and earth, to help the people of Venezuela. And the best way to do it is to get rid of Maduro, to get rid 
of, of the control and hold he's had on his people and free a people from oppression. That should have been the focus today. Yeah. David, speaking of getting rid of Maduro, um, I recently heard from Delcy Rodriguez, his so-called vice president, uh, because I know you don't recognize him as president or her as vice president, but she uh, recently said, we're not going anywhere. Uh, so they've really dug in their heels. What is it that's going to take this forward? In other words, how are you going to really get him out of the place uh, and make sure that you know, there are no lives lost in the process? Uh, the regime in Venezuela is, uh, is cracking and it's about to, to fall. Um, the interim president, Juan Guaidó, has three uh, powerful legitimacies. First of all, he's got the support of the Venezuelans, the vast majority of Venezuelans in the country and outside the country. Second, everything that he has done is uh, on the Constitution. And third, as I said before, almost 60 countries already has recognized Guaidó as interim president. He has already said that on February 23rd, the humanitarian aid is going to start. I want to um, uh, say thank you to all the countries that are doing this effort to provide food and, and, and medicines to Venezuelans that are suffering, Co Colombia, Brazil, and, and Curaçao mm -hmm. that are, 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 you know, facilitating logistics on, on during their, mm -hmm. their, their land. Can, can I ask the you US. a question just to and jump in? It, how does that it, work logistically? Because, you know, Maduro, if he continues to say, yeah, no, I'm not allowing this stuff in, and he be, sends his Venezuelan army there, what happens? That's because, the, as I said at the, uh, uh, at the beginning, the regime is cracking, and what I'm saying is cracking also the armed forces. Uh, we uh -huh. need to understand that the Venezuela has mo more than 2,000 generals. That's more than the whole NATO. Uh, having said that, the majority of the soldiers, middle and long range officials, are desperate to get rid of Nicolas Maduro. Uh, they're suffering from the same problems as any Venezuelan. A humanitarian crisis, violence, hyperinflation, and you see every week more soldiers not recognizing Nicolas Maduro and recognizing Guaidó as its commander-in-chief. So that is why on the next week we're going to see more soldiers, uh, um, you know, obeying the Constitution, or, uh, respecting uh, Juan Guaidó, and, um, and, and we are really close to restore democracy in Venezuela after 20 years.